Second Kings 2 The Parting of Elijah and Elisha And it came to pass that when the Lord decided to take Elijah up into heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah was with Elisha, his faithful follower, in Gilgal. Setting out from Gilgal together, Elijah and Elisha went to Bethel and Jericho. And the followers of the prophets who were at Jericho came to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that the Lord is going to take away your master from you today? He said, Yes, I know it. Hold your peace. And Elijah said to him, Wait here, I beg you, for the Lord has told me to go to Jordan. But Elisha said to him, As the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So the two went on. And fifty of the followers of the prophets went and stood at a distance to watch. And Elijah and Elisha stood beside the Jordan. Elijah took his mantle and folded it over, and struck the waters so that they were divided on either side. And the two men went across on dry ground. And it happened, when they crossed over, that Elijah said to Elisha, Ask what you will of me before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Let a double portion of your spirit be upon me, I beg of you. You have asked a hard thing, Elijah said. Nevertheless, if you see me when I am taken from you, you shall have your wish. But if not, you shall not have it. And it happened, as they went on and talked together, that a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared and swept them apart, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and its horsemen. Then he could not see Elijah any more, and he took hold of his own robe and ripped it in two. He picked up Elijah's mantle, which had fallen from him, and went back and stood by the bank of the Jordan. He took Elijah's mantle and struck the waters and said, Where is the God of Elijah? And when he had struck the waters, they parted on either side of him, and Elisha crossed over. When the followers of the prophets, who had come to watch him, saw this, they said, The spirit of Elijah rests on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him. And the men of Jericho said to him, You can see that the situation in the city is pleasant, but the water is bad and the ground barren. Elisha said, Bring me a new jar and put salt in it. They did so. And he went to the source of the water and threw in the salt, and said, The Lord says that these waters are healed, and they will cause no more death or barren lands. So the waters were healed forever, according to the word of Elisha. Naaman, captain of the army of the king of Syria, was a great man among his master's followers, and honorable. Through him the Lord had granted freedom to Syria. He was a man of great courage, but he was a leper. The Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought back as a captive out of the land of Israel a little girl. She was a maidservant to Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, I would to God that my Lord were with the prophet who is in Samaria, for he would cure him of his leprosy. When the king of Syria heard what the girl had spoken, he said, Go now, go, and I will send a letter to the king of Israel. Naaman departed with the letter, and took with him ten talents of silver, and six thousand pieces of gold, and ten complete changes of clothing. He delivered to the king of Israel the letter, which said, When you receive this letter, you will see that I have sent to you with it, Naaman my servant, that you may cure him of his leprosy. When the king of Israel had read the letter, he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and to make alive that this man sends a man to me to be cured of his leprosy? Take heed, for he seeks to pick a quarrel with me. Now when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel was troubled, he sent word to the king, saying, Why did you tear your clothes? Let this man come to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and his chariot, and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. 
Elisha sent a messenger hit to him, saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh will be healed again, and you will be well. But Naaman was angry, and turned away, saying, I had thought he will surely come out to me and stand there, and call on the name of the Lord his God, and strike his hand on the place, and cure the leprosy. Are not Abana and Farpar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the, wit all the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them and be cured? His servant spoke to him and said, My father, if the prophet Elisha had ordered you to do something difficult, would you not have done it? How much better to obey when he says to you, Wash and be made well? So Naaman went and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan, just as the man of God had said, and his flesh was once again like the flesh of a little child, and he was well. He went back to the man of God, he and all his company, and came and stood before him, and he said, Now I know that there is no God in all the earth but in Israel, and so I beg of you to accept a token of your servant's gratitude. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, I will accept nothing. Go in peace. And Naaman went on his way. But Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, said to himself, See, my master has refused to accept the gift offered by this Naaman the Syrian. As the Lord lives, I will run after him and obtain something for myself. So Gehazi followed Naaman, and when Naaman saw him running after him, he came down from his chariot and went to meet him, and said, Is all well? Gehazi said, All is well. My master has sent me to tell you that two young men of the sons of the prophets have just now arrived from Mount Ephraim. And will you give them a talent of silver and two changes of garments? Naaman said, Be content, take two talents. And he packed two talents of silver and the changes of clothing in two bags and gave them to two of his servants, and they carried him for Gehazi. When he came to the tower, Gehazi took the bags from them and put them in the house and told the men to go. Then he went and stood before his master. And Elisha said, Where have you been, Gehazi? And he said, Your servant has not been anywhere. Elisha said, Did I not go in spirit with you when the man left his chariot to meet you? Is this the moment to receive money and to receive garments and olive groves and vineyards and sheep and oxen and men servants and maidservants? The leprosy of which Naaman was cured has passed over to you and to your descendants forevermore. And Gehazi went from his presence a leper white as snow.